Hey everybody, what's going on? Happy Thursday to you and yours. Bay Ragney here with the Nashville Restaurant Review. And uh, I have my new good friend, Big Daddy himself, Sean Porter of Daddy Stalls with us tonight. Uh, before we get to talking to Sean and learning his whole story about his hot dog empire, I tell you about another empire coming out of the Nashville 6 1 vibe scene. They're called Bombers and Sleeves, and they are a lifestyle apparel brand, and they are dedicated to bringing the war on self doubt. This is for the bold, the fearless, and the authentic souls who never back down and wear it all on their sleeve. Bomb your boundaries at bombersandsleeves.com. That's right. Bomb your boundaries. Shop Bombers and Sleeves today, right now, tonight, tomorrow, and every day at bombersandsleeves.com. So here he is without further ado. Uh, I like to refer to him myself as truly the king of social media. For natural restaurants, the one and only Mr. Big Daddy himself. What's going on, there, Sean? Hey, man, how are we? I'm good. Thank you very much for that intro. I yeah. uh, I appreciate it. Hey, you know, I figure, you know, we got to make this official. So th- here's what I'm going to do. Yes, I, I just want to <laughs> hang on one one sec. I'll be right back. Two seconds. Okay. I had to go with you. I'm always prepared. <laughs> always prepared. Here we are. Here's Cheers. My man. I got to ask, why Miller? I don't think I've drank Miller in probably 30 years. So when we first started the shop, you know, we, we wanted to keep it really simple. And uh, I'm kind of just a big stoner from Seattle or whatever. And – the High Life brand kind of goes along with, with Daddy's Dogs and everything we do. And when we were looking at beers, I was like, how fun would it be to have a 40? I came up with the 40 Club and the 40 on Ice. And uh, the only beer, or one of the only beers, that does 40s, that's like regular beer, not like malt liquor or anything, is High Life. And so right. that's what we did. We chose it. That's and it's awesome. been ever since. And, and I love it. It's like my favorite of like – the cheaper beers, you know, <laughs> it, it is truly the classic beer. Yeah, man. Champagne of beers. Champagne Just of beer. <laughs> so, you know, it's funny. Like I, see, I love doing interviews period, but when, uh, you know, sometimes you, you, you do these and you start doing an investigation and you like, they're kind of like come up short. You're like, well, how am I going to make this work? But when I'm coming up with yours, I'm like, there's so much, uh, to you and your story. I'm just like, this is going to be so much fun. Um, so your backstory is like, you were a tour manager for musical artists. Yeah. So I started when I was 16 and, uh, I started touring with bands and, uh, started going all around the country and kind of when I was like 20, got my break in the music business and started working for some American idol people. Okay. And, uh, that's kind of how I launched that career. And, I continued to do that, you know, for the next about 10 years or so and bounced around band to band, worked for bands like uh, Cage the Elephant, Matt Nathanson, Matt Carney, uh, L. King was a big one, did the pop punk circuit and the warp tours and, you know, the festival circuits and all that kind of stuff too. So like I said, American Idol, all that. So it was, you know, it's a different life. It was a different life then, but uh, yeah. it was a lot of fun. And, and I, we kind of just, you know, I just treat this like I treat a band really. And I just <laughs> advertise and do what a band would do really, you know, it's just all I know how to do. And so, you know, it, it's, a, it's kind of amazing how much it replicates, you know, even though it's just hot dogs. Yeah. It, it very much is like kind of, you know, it comes full circle. And a lot of the skills I gain doing that, um, you know, have definitely gone over into this. I never worked in a restaurant before or anything like that. So I didn't know what I was getting myself into in that regard. So, oh, oh, geez. Okay. Yeah. This, this, this is what you were. So are, are you a musician too, or just a music lover? 
No, I'm just a music lover. And, uh, and yeah, I kind of got sucked into the business side of it. Some friends of mine when I was in like high school were going on the road and needed like a merch guy and a driver. And I was like, yeah, sure. And then like that's next couple summers I kept touring and a friend of mine had joined a band called this Providence from Seattle that had just gotten signed to fueled by ramen. And they were going on tour with like Paramore and, and we did a bunch of stuff with Copeland and, and stuff like that. So, you know, uh, I was like, well, let's go on the road. This is, you know, basically getting paid to party out here. So right. it was, uh, you know, it was a lot of fun and, and, uh, you know, learned a lot. You got to grind out there, man. So that's definitely one of the things I learned, you know, in the, in part of kind of built what built me and built like my motivation and, and my just drive. Now you are, you're from Seattle, but I, I, I younger than me so I, I think you were like missed the whole like grunge explosion I, yeah yeah I'm 32 uh, so I kind of came up like you know it was a uh, it would just turn from Graceland to El Corazon when I started going to shows and, and doing everything there you're a pop man you're a pop <laughs> yeah yep yeah, emo punk kid for life dude nice so <clears throat> Like, how does it happen where you're doing the music thing, you're <clears throat> tour manager and touring for these, with these bands into restaurant life, hot dogs, becoming the, the hot dog king? Yeah. Uh, so I kind of wanted to, you know, I've just kind of had an entrepreneurial spirit. And when I was younger, I DJed weddings and school dances and that kind of stuff. And then from there, I started a van company when I was touring with bands and I was renting vans to bands and, and that kind of thing. And, and so I was sitting down with a friend, I broke my leg in a scooter accident. Um, and we were just sitting, smoking, a, smoking a J outside of a bar in Seattle. And he was just like, man, you should get into hot dogs. And I kind of like remember just being like, daddy's dogs has a pretty good ring to it, you know? And <laughs> Uh, while I was like doing my rehab and recovering and all that kind of stuff, it just was like that little thought in the back of my mind and, you know, you're Googling away and there's nothing else to do really. So I just started researching some stuff and I never saw anyone doing it, how I would do it. And I was, after I started recovering, I planned on moving down to Nashville just cause it was more central and I was getting burnt out on Seattle and stuff. And, uh, you know, I've moved down here and was just like, Holy shit. Like, there's no one doing anything like we're doing or like how I want to do it. Like, let me try it. And, uh, went full bore and that was it. About six, seven months in, I kind of realized what it, I, what, what, what we had going and, okay. uh, you know, hung my touring hat up and was like, let's, let's dive in. Let's see how, let's see what we can do. See how, you know, how big we can take it. Now, the whole, like, so a little bit of my background, like when I was a when I was a, a, a young kid, um, eighteen, I owned a pizza shop. I, I'm from Philadelphia, Philadelphia area. Okay. So I had a I had a pizza shop at eighteen. Like I, I was a musician, and I wanted to be, you know, at that time uh, uh, a guy uh, in a hair band like Motley Crue or Guns N' Roses, etc. And um, my mom was just like, "You're not meant for school. You can drop out of school and." I was delivering pizzas for a shop at the time, and I said jokingly, oh, they're selling the shop. We should buy it. And next thing I know, we're buying a freaking pizza shop. Golly. Um, yeah, exactly. It was like it, – it was it was cool, but thrown to the wolves literally at 18. Um, long story short, the business went under, and as we were uh, parting out the business, you know, I'm, I'm trading uh, pizza ovens for a hot dog cart. Okay. All right. <laughs> and I never actually started it because I was just thinking to myself, like, well, it, it, the thing was you had to find a corner. Like you weren't, you couldn't just like in today's world, be like get a food truck and be bop around or I don't know how it, it works here. Cause I think you started with just a cart too. Yeah. We have six carts. Okay. So is it like the same way where you have to get a corner and you can't move from that corner? That's your corner. That's it. The rules here are really sketch, and just to be frank, like the cops and like the city 
uh, codes, man, and, and everyone here don't even know them. They haven't been updated since the early nineties. So they're pretty like, you know, defunct and out of, out of, it's kind of just like whatever the guy who walks up to you says goes. Um, so, you know, we've, we've just kind of posted up and done our own thing outside of trying to deal with city permits or anything like that. And, um, you know, partnered with bars or restaurants or, or different businesses to, to make it a little bit, you know, more of a partnership instead of just like us, like outside of the bar trying to, you know, get their clients to give us, get money for a hot dog or whatever. Right. Right. Um, but it's, it's, I will say it's very cutthroat. Like the game is, you know, is, is very, uh, there's, there's guys out there like, you just don't want to like cross them. You know, it's definitely like, you know, sure, sure. it's, it's a thing. <laughs> Now, how about like, um, you know, you, you have the cart, and uh, I think I, like, I was going through and finding some things, and it sounds like you guys were trying to do it like by day, and by day it wasn't working. You flipped it around and started doing it at night, and it started to take off with it. Yeah. Um, yeah. So we, we kind of always knew we wanted to do like the late night thing. Um, I just never saw a real like, uh, I never saw anyone else doing it really, you know? And like when you're on the road, it's either Jimmy John's or pizza, like usually in every place, yeah. that's all you get. And so it's like, well, let's get something different out there or whatever. And, uh, so yeah, we, uh, we went in thinking night or late night. And then we started with trying to do days. It was kind of for mine, and his schedule at the time, it was a little bit easier. Um, mine, and my business partner schedule, I guess, and, uh, and then, you know, when we kind of got our grip and figured out the process of everything, um, we started looking for those late night spots and, and kind of landed on a few and, and the rest is kind of history. Now, at any point, like when you were really like starting this early on, like, was it always just hot dogs in your mind? Did you, did you think to yourself like pizza or? Bert, why, not, why not burgers? Why, why not daddy's burgers? You know what I mean? Yeah. Uh, hot dogs were definitely like the first thing in my mind because of like the ease of the ease and cost effectiveness of getting into the market. Um, you know, you don't have to like burgers. You can't cook on the street. Uh, yeah. There's a bunch of rules with like, you know, what you can and can't cook and what's got to be pre-cooked or, you know, what whatever. And so – hot dogs just seemed like the easiest entry point. And I've always loved food. I like grew up and my grandma and like used to give me these kids cookbooks when I was little. And like, I'd make all these like, Oh, you know, weird omelets or whatever that like a kid would make in them. Um, so I've always been intrigued by it. And at one time I thought maybe yeah, a restaurant would be cool to open, but you know, I never really thought it was kind of one of those like, sit around the table with your friends and like, we should open a bar one day, but no one ever acts on it. It was kind of one of those thoughts. And then when I, when we did it and it, you know, started working, it was just like, Holy cow. And, you know, from where we, we want, or where we saw this originally going to where it is now is like, it's crazy. You know, we thought we were just going to have one or two carts, run it out of my basement and (laughs) have a couple other dudes out there hawking them on the street and, we'd be on the road with bands and live in the high life. And then, you know, there's way more work that goes into it than that. And, you know, and just how the brand and how we saw it evolving changed, you know, as we went along and as, you know, we started, I think, finding our stride in things and kind of just, you know, blazing our own trail. You, you mentioned omelets. Have you ever had a hot dog and egg omelet? Oh, I've definitely done. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I've pretty much put hot dogs like spaghetti. I've done it all. <laughs> so, so what was that? You know, I was thinking that too. I'm thinking to myself, like, uh, you mentioned sitting there, like, smoking a joint with your buddy. I'm like, I picture Big Daddy and his buddies, like, sitting there, smoking a couple joints and hanging out and perfecting the whole hot dog uh, concoction recipes that you've got <laughs> going on. <laughs> oh, yeah. So, when we first started, we had probably like four or five different like tasting sessions with like different groups. And, you know, (laughs) 
I still think one of the funniest things is, you know, we have like this book of like, okay, here's all like me and my business partner sat down, like, how do we start a business? What do we need to do? And literally the first thing on there was like, learn to cook hot dogs. And I just still like laugh when I think about that. Cause it's like not hard, but it's just like, we just had no idea what we were getting ourselves into, you know? But we had like four or five of these tasting sessions and how to, like different ways to cook them, different dogs, you know, trying to find which dog we're going to use, which different recipes and all that kind of stuff. And uh, it was a lot of fun to kind of do that. And we still do them every once in a while. We'll do them with the staff. I'll do them in my house every once in a while, have folks over, my friends and stuff when we're trying to find new dogs of the month or, uh, you know, changing the menu. We're getting ready to do a big menu change in April. And so we're kind of going through that process and figuring out what dogs we want to keep on the menu and what dogs we're going to, uh, you know, bring on from that are dogs of the month and all that kind of stuff. What's your favorite one? Ooh, on our, on our standard menu, like the six kind of, we call them like the six core nightly ones that we go out with. Uh, it's probably either the big daddy or if I'm like hungry, um, or the Seattle, if I'm just like, need a, you know, the, the big daddy is a commitment. Like it gets messy. Uh, but the Seattle I can usually handle. Um, and then if I'm at the shop, I'd usually go for a Georgia. That's one of my favorites. It's our uh, cream cheese, peaches, jalapenos, and our secret sauce. It's a little bit sweet, uh, a little bit spicy. It's super good. I love it. Yeah, you know, it's funny. Like when I saw that too, I was thinking to myself, who in the puts peaches on a hot dog? Right? Stoners. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> uh, how about like, it, like cream cheese on a hot dog? Even like I was. That's a Seattle hard. thing. That's a big Seattle thing. So like, um, you know, outside of all the venues there, the Showbox and the uh, Nectar, and I'm trying to think of the other ones, Crocodile Lounge. These guys will pull up right at the end with a cart hooked up to a truck and just start dogging and you know, however many they can sell and then they'll move to the next venue as like stuff gets out. Um, but that's like the thing is like cream cheese on a hoagie with grilled onions and then sriracha or mustard or barbecue or whatever. Um, sriracha was like always the classic I went to just wasted after a show. You're like, just got done seeing steel Panther and you're like, yeah, you know, <laughs> that's awesome. So now you mentioned, you, you had no prior food or restaurant experience. How soon into this did you realize, like, oh man, like <laughs> this is this is a lot of work. This is just making hot dogs. Oh, I mean, I'd probably say like a weekend. You know, it was <laughs> it was inst- it was pretty dang instant. Um, hang on one sec. Uh, yeah, it was pretty dang instant. Uh, Plus, it, our 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 model is a little different because we're like setting a restaurant up every night. You know, it's not like you walk into the restaurant, and you're like, "All right, I'm cooking a pizza today." Like, here we go. You're literally out there building a, a restaurant from the ground up, and then you know, tearing it down at four o'clock in the morning, right. and rolling home while the sun's coming up. And how about um, like just that with the with the how many cars did you have before you opened your first location? Uh, we had three. We had three carts uh, when we opened the shop, um, and I think we got our fourth within like a month or two of being there. And just kind of built it up since then. Wow, that's great! And this, and you started this in what twenty fifteen? Twenty fifteen. Uh, it's funny. I like looked back, and like our first post on twenty fifteen was National Hot Dog Day. It was a Wednesday, and I had no idea back then that it was even like a thing. And, uh, it was like Wednesday, you know, July 23rd or something like that. And I was like, holy shit. And I like looked and I was like, yep, that was national hot dog day that year. And so it just happened to be like, that was the day we started. Dude, that's like a total sign. Like, that, Isn't it? that's like so meant to be. That's crazy. It's pretty crazy. It's pretty wild. Wow. So now, I, I mean, for people who haven't seen them, they really have to, I, I haven't even been out to the shop at the Triumph. I'm coming. Trust me. Yeah, get out of here. I see the pictures. I'm just like, they look huge. They're like, how do you fit it in your mouth? You grip and rip it, baby. <laughs> um, yeah, it's definitely you know size matters, and that's kind of our motto there. But they're definitely not like 
what a lot of people think of like hot dogs. A lot of people think of yeah. like, oh, AM, PM hot dogs or gas station hot dogs. Right. These are definitely like, you know, I always laugh when someone comes up and get, I'll take a, a chili dog and a corn dog. And I'm like, have you ever had these before, man? Like, and then they're just like, oh shit, when they get it, like, oh crap, I, I outdid myself. Yeah. Yeah. I can imagine. So now, how about um, last year, you know, the world gets hit with this pandemic. Like, what were your initial thoughts? Were you like, oh, shit, like, I'm screwed. I, I might lose the business. What was it, How tough was it for you? Yeah, I mean, it's kind of been a blur, honestly. It's been pretty surreal. At the beginning of it, you know, we didn't – we were kind of – 2020, like, we were kind of set to, like – make some moves and we were like ready to possibly open a new spot in the suburbs or something. And, you know, we were just looking for opportunity. We were looking yeah. to expand. We were looking to kind of launch the rocket. The thrusters were like, you know, primed and it was just like hitting a button. We were ready to go. And, you know, the pandemic hit and it was like, okay, we'll like tighten all of our resources, keep everything, you know, was what we can do. And, and then it was like when everything shut down is when I kind of got really worried, like when bars closed and all that, because, you know, our restaurants there, but not a lot of people don't realize about 80% of our revenue is in late night food or events or, you know, musicians corners and, and live on the greens and all that kind of stuff that just happens in Nashville. But 80% of our money was in, in all that. And so the, uh, you know, making that pivot to, okay, well, we've got a restaurant. We've kind of just treated it as a commissary up until now. Um, and it was just kind of like, you know, it just kind of was what kept everything else turning. And now right. we have to just double down on it to like figure out a way to, you know, a lot of people didn't even know who had been out late, late at night, didn't even know we had it because they've only seen us after midnight, you know? Sure, sure. And so, you know, it was, it was a big, we kind of had this thing. It was like, we can sit back. We can let let everybody go and we can go back to work in the line in the window and like, you know, grind this year out. Or we can kind of leave the puzzle pieces we've built for the past couple of years in place and and double down on this place and try to get things going here. And so that's what we did. We you know, we chose number B on that and uh that's when we I had the idea for all the first round of uh drive in shows. And called a lot of my old band friends up and they were all, you know, bored and wanted to play. So we made that happen. And, and, you know, throughout the whole summer, just kind of pounded it, pounded the ground, did, you know, kind of what we do best on the grind and the, the guerrilla style marketing and all that kind of stuff, getting our name out and, you know, just saying yes to everything that comes in the door really. And, uh, you know, I think, I think, I don't think I'd go back and do it different. I don't think I'd, you know, change anything, but it's definitely been a, you know, interesting, interesting year for sure. Um, but it's, you know, I'm, I've always been good with my back up against the wall and I kind of built myself from nothing and I've been on my own since I was 16. So it's very much like a, you know. I'm kind of used to like getting beat down and just having to crawl my way out, you know? Right. Right. Yeah. Like when, when you started doing the, the driving shows last year, that's how I came across you. I, I was like, Oh man, this is freaking awesome. What this dude is doing for, you know, not just his business, but for the music community and, and just everybody in general that needed that outlet, you know? Yeah. Um, thank you. Now you, again, going back to, um, you know, your old career as the, the tour manager, can you picture yourself like where you would be now if you were still in that life? Like, <laughs> I can, and I'm really glad I'm not where I can picture myself being. You know, I think I was heading in a direction of being kind of that old, jaded, greasy fucking road dog that you just see out there, like grumpy, hates life, and that's not who I am and that's not who I really want to be. And like just the music industry is a, a brutal one to be in. And uh, especially the position I was in tour manager is a very hard position. You know, it's a lot of uh, 
it's a lot of really hard work for 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 people who don't want to work hard. Yeah. And that's really frustrating. And especially now that like, you know, I'm working and doing this on my own. I can like I said, I treat this like a band where now I'm the lead singer. And so if like I don't work hard and I'm not like doing anything, why should the rest of the band do anything, you know? And that's the way I have to look at it. And so having that mindset and seeing it from this angle now as like the artist or whatever, um, it would be very hard to go to work for someone that didn't have that mentality as well. And there's very few artists out there that have that mentality and have that drive to do stuff. A lot of them are too creative and it's not to any, you know, it's just how they're, they're wired, how, how they're yeah. built. Um, and they have teams behind them that can help them. I just don't think I could be a part of that team anymore where I was working harder than the artist um, who I'm working for. Now, how, how about, um, again, with the driving concerts, like I came across a uh, Rolling Stone magazine did an article on you. Yeah, that was crazy. <laughs> that was wild. I was getting emails from like people I hadn't heard from in 10 years. My teachers like, look at this. And I would, cause it went out on like the Rolling Stone email blast. And, uh, I had like no idea it was going to be any of that. Uh, one of the gals who was supposed to play, uh, Sarah Potenza, um, she had just won the, or come off the voice, you know, last the season before or whatever. And, okay. and had a friend at Rolling Stone and was like, I'm doing this concert. You got to do a thing with this guy and set it up for us. And Joe, he, who did the article was awesome. And they liked it and they pushed it through to all like their front page of all their stuff or not the front page, but like, you know, the main, one of their main stories for that time. So I was wild. That's amazing. Yeah, it was fun. Yeah. It was really cool. Is that something you're going to continue to do? You can keep doing the, doing the concerts this year as well? or We are. Um, we're trying to figure out exactly how we're going to do them this year. You know, obviously COVID and as stuff, you know, the, the belt gets loosened. We're hoping to kind of do things a little different. Um, our goal is eventually to just have it be an outdoor music venue and like, right. you know, hold a show a month or a couple shows a month or something like that. I don't know if necessarily we have the bandwidth in house to do all that, but you know, we're going to, we're talking with some folks in town and, and seeing what we can make happen and just seeing like, you know, if there's what, well, what, how we can use the space and, you know, kind of bring some fun to the neighborhood. Right. Now something else you, you guys do is uh driving. You do the driving movies, which you did over Christmas time. Mm -hmm. how you do, is that like something you do usually, or was that just Christmas time or? So we'd been doing, before we had built kind of the stage and done the drive-in stuff, we had done movie nights at the shop before. We had like a big blow-up projector screen and stuff. And uh, and so, you know, when COVID happened and the drive-ins and all that, I was like, well, you know, our shows ended in November. I was like, well, it's December. It's freezing. Like, no one's going to sit outside. Let's just do drive-in style movies. And so we did the holiday ones and I think we're going to do a, a spring and a fall version of that and kind of keep, you know, some of that summertime for mostly concerts and, and, and live music. If we can make that happen more. Nice. Yeah. Yeah. How about, um, going back to how I introduced you, the, the, the king of uh, social media in, uh, in Nashville, at least for restaurants. Um, <laughs> If, if people are not following you on uh, Instagram, I, I think you're even on TikTok and, and Facebook. Yeah. What you're up to. My God, people, hit the like button, <laughs> hit the follow button because Thank you're you. in for a treat, man. Uh, who comes with uh, with all these crazy ideas? Uh, you know, me and we've got kind of our, our core team. And I'm always like, got my ear to the ground for different ideas. And, you know, it's just kind of a team effort. Uh, a lot of like, the bigger campaigns and stuff is just like, it's just a snowball effect. Well, I'll say something and someone's like, what if we did that? And then I'm like, Oh, that's a good idea. What if we went, took it this way too? And you know, so it just kind of goes down there. We're doing what we're launching one tomorrow. We're doing another one tomorrow that I'm really excited about. It's a little <laughs> Titanic spoof and uh, really? it's going to be, it's going to be pretty funny. I think. <laughs> oh. now, it's funny. Cause I, I keep picturing in my head. There was one I saw, I, I think it was like last summer. And I just remember scrolling, and I just I see you. You're like on a skateboard, 
probably drinking a beer or something. You had a drink in your hand. You're like skateboarding down the street, you know, talking about the, the shop. And I'm just like, this dude is like my spirit animal. I got to hang with this fucking <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, man. Yeah. I mean, yeah, this year, I think we, we just brought on a, uh, a media guy to help kind of, you know, there's so many platforms and there's so much yeah. different digital shit to do these days. And, and we, our, our brand is very, um, design centric, I can say. And I don't really know how to work outside of Microsoft paint. And so we brought him on to kind of help me create a lot of this, these ideas I have and bring them to life. So I'm really excited for 2021 and, and just being able to like, just, you know, go for it this year and really like have some fun with it. Well, at this point now, how much are you like truly in there making hot dogs? I mean, or you would just become more of the businessman and the, the big daddy. I'm still dogging baby. Um, you know, we're, I'm still grinding away, you know, I'm not, not five days a week or anything, but I'm still in the shop. Um, you know, my presence is still very much there. Uh, I'm probably there six, six days a week at some, you know, some point throughout the day for something. Right. And I'm working usually three days, like on the line. So, you know, I'm still doing it. Uh, especially in the winter time when our hours are kind of, you know, a little slow, like slim down and, and it's a little slower and we're not trying to burn as much, you know, labor costs and stuff. Like sure. we, uh, you know, still got to put that dogger hat on and, and make some dogs, you know. Now something too, I, I, I guess you just did this recently. You added a uh, alcohol to the mix. You're doing like boozy milkshakes and all. Yeah. We've got liquor. Um, I'm excited about this. So we, we partnered with old smoky moonshine. And we're doing uh, basically doing all a moonshine program with them. And so we're doing boozy shakes that we're calling shine your shake. And uh, you can put moonshine in any of your shakes. We've got a couple different options that we like suggest an orange dream sickle. That's really good. It's like the orange cream sickle uh, mm-hmm. popsicles from when you were a kid. We've got a PB PB W and C peanut butter, whiskey and chocolate. And it tastes like a Reese's. It's delicious. Um, and then we've got whiskey and moonshine is is the best. Oh, it's so good. And we've got an apple pie toasted crunch is what we're calling it. And it's apple pie moonshine with a uh, cinnamon toast crunch in a shake. It tastes like an apple churro. It's pretty, pretty delicious. Wow. Yeah. And then we've got our drink pouches, which is just an adult Capri Sun and uh, I had a few friends stop by today, and they're like, "These are delicious!" And I'm like, "We're gonna get a second one." And I was like, "Be careful, because you know they're they're like heavy pours, and like they're they'll get you, man. And you can't really taste the booze too much; it just tastes like juice. So you're like, oh, this is delicious.' And pretty soon you're like, "Oh shoot, I got a solid one going," you know. But wow. it's you know, it's like I said, you can't have too much. You can't take it too seriously. We can't go in there and start making like old fashions and martinis. Right. So it's like, what can we do with the liquor license? And, you know, part of the reason why we had, we got it was for some of our events and everything that we do. And uh, so it just made sense to kind of roll it over into, into the shop and, and doing liquor there and stuff. Now do you do like uh, catering events and stuff too? Or Yeah. So we've, we've done some, like we do weddings a lot, you know, that's a huge thing for us. Uh, business um, events. We're like one of the fastest uh, food kind of things. Like, you know, we can just churn and burn. We can do a hot dog every like 20 seconds if we're like full force. It's, you know, like per station or whatever. And wow. so we're, we're going really quick. So we do a lot of those like corporate events where they, they've got like their whole team for the summer picnic or whatever. And it's just boom, 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 boom. Um, we'll do some of those. And uh, then we do our own events where like we did a Nashtoberfest, which is basically an all Nashville Oktoberfest that we host. Okay. Um, and that's really fun. We do that in uh, usually the first weekend in October every year. And we're also doing uh, in the spring, we do Sylvan Park Puppy Play Day, which is like a big dog meetup at a park. And we just hot dogs and real dogs and, you know, just let them off the loose and they go crazy and drink some beers and hang out with the neighborhood. That's awesome. Yeah, it's a lot of fun. That's awesome. 
Do, do you get, I mean, I, I'm sure you do. Like you have a, a nice following on social media, but like when you're out and about in, in your normal life, do people recognize you and stop you at all? Yeah. It's always, that's always fun. It's always like, doesn't feel surreal. Cause I've always been with bands where that happens all the time. Right. And so now it's happening with me and I'm just like, I'm just a fucking guy. Like I don't <laughs> sing songs or like, entertain you i just feed you hot dogs or whatever <laughs> but it's always pretty humbling and funny and my girlfriend always just kind of rolls her eyes and it's like come on again <laughs> you know like i love it well yeah i mean i mean like back home in philly you know cheesesteaks is the big thing yeah and uh, you know a, a guy who i'm i'm friends with is like the cheesesteak king and he's like a food guy tony luke jr and uh you know he, he's like that he's like a, an icon in philly and you know, he's done like TV shows and stuff like that. So yeah, I, I could totally see it. You, you had that personality too. Thank you. I appreciate it. We'll see if I uh, land any TV shows. I keep saying, I, I tried out for real world a while back and I was like, <laughs> I'm made for this thing. And then they didn't call me. And I was like, dang, I guess I wasn't, but um, uh, Philly, have you, do you know Govinda's on <laughs> South 12th? It's uh, like a vegan cheesesteak place. And, That's why I don't know it. Yeah. It's <laughs> unbelievably good for vegan. But, like, I always just think of that place for some reason when I think of Philly. Of course, there's Pat's and Geno's and Jim's and everybody. All, all the uh, the tourist thing. Yeah, yeah the, the one thing I never got to do before I left, which was uh, starting to get popular before I, I moved here uh, a year and a half ago, was uh, the Philly taco. Where what people were doing, they were going to Jim's and then get, they were getting cheese stick and they're walking down the street to Lorenzo's Pizza and getting a slice of pizza and wrapping the pizza Ooh. around the cheesesteak. Golly. Yeah. The gluttony sounds yeah. delicious. Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. So um, something you're doing now, which I, I got to thank you. You, 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 you. We actually were in talks a couple months ago to try to get this interview hooked up, and then it uh, rekindled over the last week or so. Um, so we're going to do a contest together, which I'm – freaking stoked about thank you so much for for doing this yeah it's gonna um, be awesome but you you have uh you're giving away one of your daddy's date nights to one of our people on instagram so why don't you tell them what daddy's date night is yeah so this is a we've had this idea for a couple of years and um up until this year we've in the winter time we've always closed or just just been open for lunch so we've closed at 3 p.m. every day. And this year we, we kind of pivoted and we got the tent out there and a bunch of heaters and we're like making it a vibey space and all this kind of stuff. And so I finally was like, guys, it's time to do the date night. And it's basically like we're trying to make it the cheesiest and funniest and most romantic. <laughs> where is it? Romantic, like <laughs> dinner for two we can. And so we've got like candles and and roses and and all this, and we're doing like a you know towel over the arm weighted kind of thing, which is so different than what we normally do. We usually walk up and window service and stuff. So I think it's just going to be something really unique and fun, and it's full four courses, including drinks. Um, so you know it's only sixty nine bucks normally. It's a really good deal if you're out there listening. But, uh, yeah, I'm, I'm excited to give one away to somebody. And uh, it'll be, you know, like I said, it's just going to be fun, unique. And it's like during all this COVID stuff, it's like, you know, it's the perfect thing to just be like, what, like, here we go. You know, it's all yeah. outdoors. It's all that kind of stuff. So it's it's just going to be fun, you know. That's funny. It, you know, it's funny. That my, my fiance just to me last night. She's like, I want, cause we're doing like all these like video reviews and all we try to like be goofy and, and funny, you know, to, to make it entertaining. She's like, you know, we should do something where we get really dressed up and, and go somewhere that's, you know, we shouldn't be dressed up at. And I said to her, I said, we should go to daddy's dogs. <laughs> you should, you should come to date night. It'd be hilarious and funny. We're yeah. It's going to be, we've got some other tricks and we're doing like a take home gift bag. That's got some really, really funny goodies in it. Um, so I'm excited for it, and uh, it's just going to be, you know, it's it's just going to be fun. That's all I can say. And I hope that's what people leave thinking is like that was fun, like you know, and they remember that date. Hope and who knows, maybe we'll uh, spark some engagements or something. I don't know. There you go. There you go. I mean, hell, 
I, if people need to go again, going back to social media, they need to go on and see the bachelor video that you, go, you, you did. <laughs> <laughs> it was a fun one, man. It was a fun one. That's funny. That's so freaking funny. So, all right. So, uh, you yeah, know, we're going to launch that, you know, in a little while after we're done this, probably nine, a little after nine or so on Instagram. So everybody check out my Instagram. His Instagram will be tagging and we're going to launch this. It's a 24 hour contest. So you got to see the picture we put up and see the rules and, Follow along, play along, and then tomorrow night we'll uh, announce the winner. 24 hours is all you got to enter. So 24 anytime. hours. Yeah. Cool. So tomorrow you have an, a Titanic video launching. You have, uh, so you said you have a new menu coming up in, in a couple months? Yeah, we're just adjusting kind of what we got. We're kind of making some changes and just reviewing the dogs that we have, if we want to keep them all or if we want to just add some, you know, kind of, it's just been, we've, we've rocked the same menu for two years and I feel like it's right. kind of time to, to make some moves. And so, you know, what do you think is the craziest thing you guys have put on a hot boat? I mean, shit, the Toronto we have right now, everyone is like, that's fucking weird. It's peanut butter, bacon and maple syrup. And it's, really really good if if like you're willing to go out on a limb it's sweet you know and and uh and savory all at the same time it's so have, in the secret offices have you guys like tried some really weird stuff and you're like no oh for sure yeah we tried <laughs> some dogs that were just like no no i tried like a cheeto dog once um and it was I thought it was going to be good. I saw it on like Instagram. I was like, Oh, Cheetos on a hot dog. That's cool. Like you crush them up and like use the powder. And it was not what I thought it was. And the Cheetos, like the powder got like stuck in my throat and it was like, you know, like you accidentally breathe it in because it's just like a dusting on top. That's always stuff. You just, you know, don't take into account every time, but, um, but yeah, man, there's some, like some people put some crazy shit on hot dogs, dude, or just some people are just so basic. They're like, you know, just give me cheese. You want any mustard or anything on that? Cheese. Okay. <laughs> oh, that's funny. How about, has anybody tried, like, you said peanut butter, has anybody tried, like, Nutella? Uh, I haven't ever done a Nutella dog. No, I wanted to, for a while, I wanted to do, try, like, a dessert dog and do, like, mm-hmm. a fried banana in, like, a Nutella donut or something. Cool. That was just like my super ultimate high, like, let's do this, man, you know? And uh, I haven't got around to doing it yet, but I'm not going to say no. There you, I think you just, the donut dog, I mean, they've started doing, uh, you know, bacon cheeseburgers between two glazed donuts. Why not a donut dog? We thought about it. I think it would be volume for the thing. The hardest part for us is like, how much do we get per day? You know, do we get 12 of them? Do we get 24 of them? And then it's over. Um, but that's definitely something that will, might and will probably end up becoming a dog of the month. Dude, I can't wait to not only come out there and meet you, but eat some freaking hot dogs. Yeah, man. It's a little bit excited to have you at the shop and, and, and meet you face to face and everything. Absolutely. And uh, have some millwares in person. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> I haven't done damage to this. Cool. So where should we send everybody to learn more about you? Definitely. Uh, I know Instagram, TikTok. Yep. It's just- Daddy's Dogs Nash is kind of our everything. So we're on TikTok. We're on Instagram. We're on Facebook. That's our website, daddysdogsnash.com. Um, you can sign up for our email list there. I usually, I don't bombard people. I usually send two to three emails a month and one of those almost has something free in it. So it's worth signing up for. And, uh, you know, I try not to be like too big of a pester on there, but you know, it's, it's, we gotta, we gotta yeah. these days. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Absolutely. Absolutely. Cool. And how about, uh, there's something else. And now I'm like, Oh, somebody put in the comments, uh, they heard you have a vegan dog, and I'm pretty sure you do. We do, uh, yeah. So you can make any dog vegetarian, and then our vegan style is bunless, unfortunately. Our, we had to switch buns a while back, and okay. and they went to using some dairy products in them. Um, but, yeah, any dog can be uh, – we can make vegetarian, and then you can do a vegan option bunless or whatever too. 
And I guess I have to say this. One of my guys just texted me. I, I can't do any interview without saying um, if you get some extra time and you're bored during quarantine, uh, I have a movie called Slow Ride Home, and it's on Amazon Prime. Uh, go check it out. It's about me and my idiot friends riding from Florida to Seattle on scooters. And oh, it's yeah, a fun – it's a fun ride. watch. And, uh, yeah. Slow Ride Home. Yep. Anything else you're involved in that we should know about? Like... I don't know, man. I mean, you know, I'm always scheming different stuff. All <laughs> we got our our beer box club um, is something we're, we're we're we started during the quarantine to kind of pivot and try to do some other stuff, and it went really well. So we're going to keep it going. Uh, so we're going to do four boxes a year, and we're getting ready to launch and announce the spring one probably beginning of March or so. Um, and it'll be like all local beers again and, you know, great like gift or a great like date night taster. Oh, let's taste some beers or whatever. You know, you have a couple beers and do it a couple times and get lit and hopefully late. You know what I'm saying? There you go. <laughs> Big daddy getting you laid. What is there that? we go. <laughs> I'll be the wingman. I was always good at that on tour. <laughs> Well, dude, this is uh, this has been great. Thanks again for doing it. Thanks again for uh, the contest. Yeah, uh, thanks for having me on, Big. Absolutely, man. Look forward to meeting you and uh, our new friendship. Heck yeah, dude! And thanks absolutely. everyone for watching and listening. Yeah, man. We'll cool. see you guys. Take care. Mm-hmm.